Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I thought today I would just go through the actual numbers and some of the key measurements for the Arizona real estate market to help you understand where we're at here in the month of August and uh, compare it to other news stories you're seeing and just look at the true raw numbers and help make decisions on uh, whether or not you want to buy or sell your home or stay put. So let's take a look at the first thing and that is sales per month because that's that's the big thing that's driving the downward pressure on pricing and everything in this market. We have 5,681 for the month of July this year. And that's the lowest July we've seen for gosh knows how long. Now, that's not a seasonal dip because you can go back to 2021 for July and we had 8614. So a seasonal dip is just a tiny little dip because it's hot and everybody's getting ready to go back to school. That's not what's going on here, and everybody knows that. So it is a low and almost the lowest we've had since 2019, where the lowest we had then was in January of 5,257. So sales are low. Now, what's happening with low sales? Well, with low sales, it drives high listing counts. What's happening is... Listings are not really coming on on a higher clip than they have been in the past. In fact, if you look at my seven-day moving average here, the blue line are the number of homes that come on every seven days, you know, over a seven-day average. The red line, the number of contracts that are written. You can see that that hasn't spiked up. So when you look at everybody saying, well, there's a lot of listings coming on, and there really isn't. Now, there has been a little bit of a pop this weekend. But it's not significant. So if you look at this, you say, well, here's where we're at here. But we've certainly been putting listings on at a higher rate before. But we were putting them under contract at a higher rate. And right now, we're just not seeing them being pulled off the market. So when you look at this listing chart here and you see that we went from this low of 45.53 up to 16.68, that's simply because the buyer said, I'm out. The increase in interest rates priced people out of the market. Now you have a affordability problem that begs a correction to happen. And we don't know if it's going to be a long-term correction or a fast snap downward spiral. We don't, we don't know. We can only look. Here's the average list price per square foot in active listings. So people are listing their homes at a lower price. And it's kind of hard for people because right here, sitting there at 2022 in April, you're sitting there and going, wow, I, here's this peak. I can get this for my house? And then you find out here, well, no, really, I can't. I guess I'll have to lower my price. And that's what we're seeing. A lot of the price reductions that we're seeing right now are investors and iBuyers, like Open Door and OfferPad. In addition to lowering their prices, Open Door is offering a $1,000 credit for close of escrow to the buyer. They're also offering real estate agent <coughs> a bonus of as high as $3,500 if you find them a buyer by the end of September. And they're getting into an active agreement with Zillow to work together. So they're not going out of business. It's amazing how much money they can lose, and they're still in business. Here's how many price changes we see a week. Look at that spike. Look at that, 4172 I actually tracked this week. It was 6000 So people were trying to get their list price, but then they had to change and they just had to give up. That's pretty high, higher than it ever was 2019. This shows you the level of expectations that sellers had when we first got into the market and how much of an adjustment that they've had to make and still need to make. Now, when we look at monthly average sales price per square foot, you can see that it's come down and it came up, up a little bit. This is the great run-up that led to the great crash of 2008, which started right officially in September of 2008. Uh, that's when Lehman Brothers shut down. So right here, um, right in this area. But you can see that prices ran up and they came down. Um, if you look at a 50-year average for home prices, it goes up about 4% a year. It would be a straight line that would go where you see the miles traveling right now. And it would end up probably about where this word county is right here. So 4% a year probably put us somewhere around 245 a square foot. Now, whether or not we come down to that normal 
50-year average or not is anybody's guess. But here's a chart that tells us where we're at more than anything I've seen, and that is supply versus demand. See that red number? That's a demand index, and the blue number is a supply index. Demand is coming down, and that's forcing supply up. Demand is at 885, where 100 is considered normal. Supply is 65.6, .6, and it's got pretty much a straight arrow up, like it did back here in 2005. So it was a 65 right here, supply index 65.6. We were at uh, 79, let's see, 65, 6. We were at 58 back here in September of 2005. And from September 2005 until November 2006, just about a year, we climbed up to a supply index of 213. So could we do that? That's what we're going to watch. Because see this gap in the middle? Demand dropped off too. It dropped off severely. This gap between supply and demand is what drove prices down. Now, there were a lot of different reasons. 2008, wildly different than what we're seeing now. And that was all bad loans and things imploded and fell apart. We're not seeing that now. We're just seeing this as strictly an affordability issue. So we'll see how it shakes out and how long it takes. The Federal Reserve has said that they intend to get control of inflation and inflation still coming in hot we got a new inflation number coming in this week it's expected to come in really hot and they've got to keep trying to clamp the only way you can get a hold of inflation is to slow down activity slow down consuming slow down businesses and the employment report was hot so that puts more pressure on the central banks to clamp down even harder so if you think rates are going down it sure doesn't look like it and i don't see that happening anytime soon but on the flip side if you're waiting for foreclosures they're just not out there folks they're still down here in the basement sitting here at uh trustee sales per month of 238 so you know i guess you could call this an average here about 700 to 800 but foreclosures are not going to be ringing their bell uh, for you to find an opportunity anytime soon that's way later the other thing is you're still seeing investment groups purchasing up real estate slowing down in Arizona. We were at like 28, 29%. Now we're at 17.8% of investor activity. But if they start seeing something like the foreclosure numbers start to go, those houses are never going to hit the market. They're going to buy them right away. And so the foreclosures may never end up being your opportunity in this market just because of that, that Wall Street money that's out there. They've managed to amass a lot of funds poised and ready to pounce once um, things start hitting the market. Now, I'm also seeing that in buyer traffic. Interestingly enough, buyer traffic went up a little this week because rates for a few days went from 5.5 down to 5 and almost 4.9. And so a few people jumped right back in. Um, that shows you how rate sensitive this market is. But again, I don't hold hope that we're going to see lower interest rates. And I think we're going to be in this high interest rate environment for well over a year. But that's just my opinion. All I can do is take a look at these numbers and see where they're going. Like, and what I want to emphasize is this is the chart we want to pay attention to right here. How big is this gap going to grow? Until if these two cross and they start creating the same gap that we see back here on supply and demand, the pricing pressure will increase. So stay, pay attention to that. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick, rickhelps.com. Thanks for watching.